let them cows out. Move, 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 move. move. Hello, hello everyone. Happy Sunday once again. Let me know if you guys can hear me out there. We we're kind of having a few little technical glitches getting ready for the show. Good old Spreecast. Yay! Oh good. I was good when you guys can hear me. Yes, it is windy in Vegas. I don't know what's up with that. You know, it gets it gets windy here every now and then. But the sun is shining, so I am not gonna complain. We'll take it. We'll take the sun. <laughs> And some of you are saying you can't hear me. Hmm. Oh, you guys, I, I got to tell you, I'm really, really looking into switching away from Spreecast because a lot of these issues are happening for too many of you, and I just don't like it. I'm definitely going to be uh, looking for another place to take the show where we don't have all these crazy glitches. Um, cause there's always like so many of you that have trouble getting into the show and, and all of that, but I can tell you, um, hopefully you can hear me say this, uh, we have archives of the show in several places. Um, I don't leave it just up to Spreecast, although you can go and replay the shows right through my Spreecast channel. You can also catch them over on YouTube. Uh, where I now, I record every show and I put it over on YouTube. So if you subscribe to my YouTube channel, and since, uh, since April's having some trouble hearing me too, I'm going to put that link here in the chat room for you as quickly as I can. I can see. It's all good. <laughs> Basically, I'm the Danny app over on YouTube. You can look for my videos over there. And if you subscribe to the channel, it is also going to let you know every time I put up a new video. So not only do I put the show videos up over there, I also make these little, uh, I try to pick out some little thing that you always hear everybody telling you to do or we're supposed to know how to do, but nobody ever shows you how to do. Um, this week I put up how to clear your cash and cookies, um, which with Spreecast tends to be a thing that sometimes works. Um, so that that was what I put up there today, so you would have gotten notified of that video. And like I said, all the show videos go up over there with all the links and everything down in the comments. Also over on the website, um, every week we upload the latest show on Tuesdays. So you can find it there. It's everywhere. You can always go back and find the show. And then you can fast forward to your favorite spots if you want to see something again. Yeah. Yeah, George, uh, you know, we use GoToWebinar for the Appster's classes and that, but it's not a really good venue to run a show like this because unless, you know, you automatically know that it's happening, you don't just happen upon it. And um, that's the nice thing about the channels like um, uh, Spreecast and, and Livestream and some other ones is that people that are just looking for something to watch can come and find them. It's kind of like its own little search engine. So, and yeah, we definitely like to chat, so having the chat room is important. But I've got a couple little options I'm working on, so stay tuned for uh, news about that. Because um, I am not keen on all the technical difficulties, especially when it comes to even getting my poor producer in here um, to hear and to be able to put the, the links and things on the screen. We need her. <laughs> And also, if you like to just listen in audio, um, we are getting these uploaded to iTunes. Uh, we had a little delay for a while. We're getting caught up, so they should all kind of be on there now, too. But that will be, of course, audio only. You don't get to see all the cool stuff that I show on the show. All right. And as you know, you guys can submit questions right through my website at askthedannyapp.com. Uh, anything in particular you want me to talk about on the show, that's the place to um, throw it at me. That, that way it just kind of keeps it all organized in my email inbox. Otherwise, oh, you guys, you don't want to see my email inbox, trust me. <laughs> I have a pretty good system, but 
things do get lost every now and then. Um, we had a question come in this week from Terry who asks about characters and titles. Um, there's a lot of sellers who are using all kinds of stuff besides letters and numbers in their titles, such as those little, uh, oh, what do you call those, little, little the tildes and quotations and uh, parentheses and all that stuff. You guys, you don't want to use that. You don't want to use punctuation in your titles unless it's specifically something like an apostrophe that makes the word what it is. Um, no fancy little characters in the title because the search engines don't read them. And think about it, I, search engines are meant to flow. They're flowing. So anything that kind of like hampers that ability to flow, more likely your listing is going to get tossed to the wayside and it's going to go on to the next one that's easy to read and, and uh, available for it to put out to someone looking. No amper, well, ampersand, you see that's a tricky one. You really don't need to say and or have the ampersand. Um, I do use it when it is part of the title of a, a maker or the, the specific name of something. But for the most part, I try not to use it. Try not to use it. And search engines do not read the words the, and, an, of, um, just all those little connecting words, they don't see it. They don't read it. You don't need to waste space with those. And remember, your picture is really what someone is paying attention to when they do a search. Okay, they've put in their search words, whatever they're looking for. Now they come back with a page of results based on what you wrote in your title. I can tell you, though, when somebody gets back those results, they are not looking at your title and if it's grammatically correct or if it makes sense, they're looking at your picture. The picture is what is going to make them click over and look at that listing. The words are there for the search engine basically and just to catch you know, the eye of somebody. They might like skim your title but they're not reading for grammatical correctness or if it makes sense or any of that. Um, so you don't need to worry about. Yeah, so like if you're listing something that's M&Ms, obviously you need to put that ampersand in there. M&Ms is M&Ms. Um, so that is what you would be looking for. Yeah. So did that make sense, Terry? Hope I answered your question for you. But yeah, a lot of sellers, a lot of sellers putting all those little characters in the title. So all you have to do is write a better title and you're going to come up higher on the search. If the is in the title of a book, do you need to use the? Nope. Nope. And I don't. Um, use the part that doesn't include the the. I will sometimes use it if I have nothing else to put in the title to add, you know, value to that title. And then it just kind of is like for the human eye pleasing kind of thing. But only if I have nothing else to add to the title. That's the only time I use the. Yippers. So it was a good question, though, because, you know, we often forget, and I know it's really hard to go against the grain of wanting to write the way we write. We want to write the way we were taught in school and, and keep it, you know, grammatically correct and, and have all that. So we have, to, we have to think more like robots, I guess, is, you know, what we're writing for. Write for the robots. That's, that's, that's it. <laughs> Um, so I wanted to give a little uh, Appster update. For those of you who don't know what the Appsters are, um, I have a membership group uh, called Danny App Behind the Scenes and the members are Appsters and we meet twice a week. We get together um, for a specialty class on Mondays and then on Wednesdays we just have a general Ask Me Anything class and, and we do a webinar of your questions. Um, and right now the, the appsters are working on their business plans. Of course, we call it the Danny map. Um, so we're mapping out our plans for our business and everything. And we're doing some pretty fun stuff this week. We're uh, paying attention to our, our shall we say, problem areas. Um, 
you know, in, in big corporations and stuff, you have different departments that handle all the different stuff. And us, working from home, we get to be the, uh, the uh, what are we, the buyers, the purchasers, we're the marketing department, we are the accounts receivable, the accounts payable, the uh, product placement, the, you know, we're everything, we're everything. And so it really helps to kind of look at your different sections of your business. In this case, we're going over the four main sections, which are your desk, where I know a lot of it all takes place. So we're, we're looking at our desk setups. We're looking at our, uh, our photography setups, our shipping areas, and our inventory storage. Those, are, those seem to be the four pain areas in, in eBay businesses. So we're having a lot of fun taking before pictures and then working on different things and everybody's kind of helping one another. It's really fun. So yeah, you can find the Appsters over at thedannyapp.com if you want more information on that. And we do have a two-week free trial, so uh, you can even test, test drive it before you uh, jump in with both feet. Wanted to put that out there. Um, outright, outright, outright is coming to Vegas for anybody who is in the Vegas area this week. Uh, they will be here Wednesday the 27th. Um, I am the organizer of the Las Vegas Online Sellers Meetup Group. And we meet once a month and have a guest speaker. And uh, we have a couple of people from Outright coming to talk about the dreaded, shall I say it, the T word, taxes. Um, April's right around the corner. And Outright is uh, really, really good at giving out this information and helping with this stuff. Um, I got to do a, a interview this week with a uh, reporter that was doing a little story on them and uh, got to talk to him about Outright. That was really fun. I think uh, someone posted that over on Facebook. It's floating around. Um, but yeah, so if you are in the Vegas area, come and give us a visit. Uh, April's got the URL up there on the screen. It's meetup.com slash Las Vegas Online Sellers. And uh, it's a lot of fun. Also, Outright has a blog. For uh, those you may not know, um, myself and Kat Simpson and a few other people are uh, guest bloggers for the Outright.com blog. And uh, they put out something good every day. You know, there's some, some good articles coming out there. So that's another good follow uh, if you guys didn't know about that. And, of course, they write about taxes and accounting and all that good stuff, too, uh, mixed up with all the other stuff. This week, I, uh, I have an article coming out about buying at auction houses and some things you should know. So keep an eye out for that. Um, big apology, guys. Big apology. Uh, Stamps.com, as uh, many of you know, has a free eBay account. And the link, apparently, that we've been sending you to was sending you to a, a trial version of their paid account, and then a lot of you were getting charged. And uh, huge apologies. That was completely unintended. Uh, you can clear that up right away. Just give them a call, and we have the phone number for you. Uh, bu -bu 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 -bu. Did I give that to you, April? If not, I meant to. <laughs> there it is. 888-434-0055. If you just give their customer service a call, they will get you over to the free account if that's what you intended to sign up for, and they will credit you that $15.99. Now, I do have the paid version. Love the paid version. Um, but for those of you who were not expecting that, I, I do apologize, and we've got that all fixed up now. All right. Um, bubble Fast. You know I love Bubble Fast. They are so cute. They sent me a little Valentine's gift of a little package of uh, pink peanuts. Hey, that's just as good as chocolate in my book. Uh, so I got to I got to sample their packing peanuts which is really cool um, because I had no idea. Because I am so far from them, it's really cost prohibitive to get the peanuts from them because it's a big oversized package. Uh, for those of you who are close enough to them, and I believe they are based out of, somebody correct me if I'm wrong, are they not in the Chicago area? Is that where Bubble Fast is based out of? I'm sure somebody knows. 
Somebody must know. Okay, good. If you are close enough to Chicago to, uh, if you are close enough to Chicago to get your bubble fast peanuts right from bubble fast, I highly recommend. They have the high quality peanuts. Of course, I, they sent me the pink ones, which are the best. They're anti-static. Um, highly recommend their, their bubble packaging is the best that I've found out there. And I've sampled a lot of, of bubble wrap, believe me. Um, you use about half the amount you would with buying the cheaper versions. Well, you can get the cheaper versions cheaper. <laughs> and it seems like you're getting a better deal. Check it out. Just check it out. Trust me. Trust me. Trust me. All right. How about we get into some scores? Who's ready for some scores? Yeah, Wendy, uh, because it's an oversized package, and so it would it would not be free to get them to me, unfortunately. Yeah. Totally wonderful product, though. And they are fast, yeah. All right, scores. I have to get our sound effects back. Do you guys miss the sound effects? I miss them. <laughs> Hey, that's the other thing. If you if you go and watch the videos I put up, I managed to get the uh, the old uh, theme song up at the beginning, so you get to hear the theme song if you go watch the video over on YouTube. <laughs> Gotta get our sound effects back. Okay, so um, and I think I saw Chris in our chat room tonight. Chris is a uh, relative newcomer to eBay and. Um, having some struggles you may have seen him posting so he he did sell his uh, his first coffee mug uh, Starbucks mug and let's see he bought it for 99 cents which is a great price to pay for a Starbucks mug and he did sell it for 995 plus shipping now I gotta tell you I'm gonna give kudos to Chris for for hanging in there because it is tough getting started I work with a lot of new sellers and it's very discouraging. I'm telling you, I, let's not deny it. Starting out on eBay is not what it used to be. It is getting harder to get noticed and, and get your numbers built up. Um, he does have 73 feedback, so you got that in your favor. And I think you'll find once you kind of get over the 100 mark, you're going to be doing even a little better. Um, but it's just a matter of getting those items listed, getting your numbers up, um, running some fixed price, possibly with best offer. That'll help sales come in. Um, just hang in there. Hang in there. Those sales are going to come. Uh, his item number is 3210-7490-4770 if you guys want to take a look at that mug. Yeah, the good old days. You know, there are a lot more people now selling online. It is much more competitive. It's a lot harder to drive that traffic. We have to work a lot harder than we used to. Uh, but it's still a completely doable business. And I would, I would wager to say probably mm, 70 to 80 percent of the sellers out there are not as passionate as you guys about selling and proper titles and descriptions and worrying about making their business good so you guys can really stand out there's just some simple things you know you guys can do and be ahead of the masses of sellers out there absolutely yeah that's true that's true about 90 percent of stuff used to sell back in the good old days there was a lot of problems back in the good old days too. Let's 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 keep it real too. <laughs> keep it real. Keep it real. All right, Lisa. I love this. I love this. Lisa sold a mug also. This is item number one four zero eight five one nine five four three zero four. And she says she picked this up because uh, she was tickled that the cow spots made her think of me. So I'm so glad that I was able to help you channel a little bit of uh, buying vibe there. Um, and it's actually was a uh, 
a Dalmatian instead of a cow, but I gotta tell you, it does look like a cow. If that dog wasn't on the handle, I would totally think that was a cow mug. But $34.99, way to go, way to go. Um, let me pull up your original listing here, take a look. Yeah, that's cute, and it's a it's a Gans. Gans is a good brand, um, and we got to even point out to Lisa she used those little quotation marks in her title, and still got found. So good. You want to be careful of that though, because the way the search engine would read that is if somebody had put just the word say spotted in there, it wouldn't have pulled up spotted for that that searcher. So just keep an eye on that, but uh, good job selling that for full price. Nice, nice, nice. All right, you guys, this one, I'm I'm scratching my head on this one, honestly. I'm looking at this going, why, why, why? <laughs> so perhaps, Tina, Tina, are you with us tonight? Let's see if Tina's here. Okay, Tina, how in the heck did you know that this was going to be worth something. This is item number 17099263 You guys pulling that up? I'm going to wait for the comments in the chat. I'm getting uh, some holy cows, some OMGs. <laughs> Mind you, this is an empty bottle. So she had a hunch. She had a hunch. So the story um, that Tina told us was that this absolute vodka bottle was her own. Um, was that a fun party? Just kidding. <laughs> um, she hung on to it, figuring it would be worth something one day. So how, how long did you have to hang on to it, Tina? How long did it take for that sucker to go up in value? 10 years. Okay. All right. So, hey, you know what? Think about it. Think about a lot of the stuff that we sell is because somebody held on to it for X amount of years. So, if you got room to hold on to stuff like this that you have a hunch about, this one certainly paid off. She bought it in 2003, and um, I'm sure she bought it full, <laughs> and uh, sold for $249.99. I am guessing it's because of some sort of uh, artwork that is on. Um, it's a Romero Brito art, limited edition. Now, a little heads up, you guys. Liquor bottles or bottles of uh, that, that once contained alcohol, uh, they've recently passed this new thing on eBay that you cannot, you can no longer sell full bottles. Um, used to be able to do that, but so many sellers were saying, oh, just selling the bottle when really people were buying the contents. Um, you know, a lot of hard liquor, you know, rums and vodkas and whiskeys and that kind of thing. And they they had to shut that one down. I totally get why they had to do that. That was crossing some pretty sketchy lines. Miners were getting a hold of it. Now we know miners are not supposed to be bidding on eBay, but an 18 year old is still not supposed to be buying alcohol. So that was that was, a, that was a tricky ruling there, but you can still sell empty bottles. So if you do have a collector bottle or, or one and it has some alcohol in it, dump out the alcohol, sell the bottle. Yep. Uh, my daughter just recently, this was a hard lesson, she got this really good deal on a bunch of old Jim Beam bottles. When I was at her house recently in California, I uh, I helped her get all those listed, and sadly, sadly, she did end up getting her money back from from what she had into them. But sadly, most of them sold at just the opening bid of nine ninety five. 
Yeah, there uh there's too many of them out there. There's too many. There there are some that are worth some money. But you got to do your homework. So you see Jim Beam bottles, you know, for a buck a piece, mm, pass them by. Leave them. Leave them on the shelf, leave them at the yard sale. Jim Beam bottles not so good. <laughs> they did. They used to be a fantastic seller. Uh, I think just too many people got them and people are getting smaller collectibles or if they do larger collectibles they're more valuable things so uh, people are just going more minimal in in what they're collecting and, and those take up a lot of space a lot of space recycle them sure yeah, I remember my mom had a whole bunch of wild turkey bottles that she sold at a yard sale in the 80s. No, you don't wish you still had those, Mom. <laughs> They're gone. <laughs> Let them go. <laughs> All right. What else we got going this week? Aha. Lori. Uh, Lori paid $12 for this electric toothbrush yesterday. She just got this sucker listed. Um, this is item number 2309343817611. And she paid $12 for it and sold it on a best offer of $69.99 plus shipping. So she did have the shipping broken out separately. So she had listed it for $89.99. So only took $20 less. I know some of you agitate over whether to take some of those offers, but just have this little thing floating through your head. Can't go broke making a profit. If you can do that quick flip, you make a decent profit, let it go. Sell it. Move to the next thing. Um, and I'm not saying take low ball offers. I'm not saying that at all, and I'll talk about that in just a second. But if you get a good offer like this, you pay 12, somebody offers you 70, man, take it. Take the money and run. Yes, the, the, you know, there's a lot of health conscious stuff now. Um, more and more people uh, are, and I'm becoming more aware of this because of my daughter. She's really into healthy living and eliminating all the chemicals and BPAs and all that stuff that's out there and and people like things like these um, electric toothbrushes and stuff because of you know they're they're more sanitary they got all the you know the UV cleaners and all this stuff man people are into that and they will pay for it so when you see that stuff watch for it yeah and people are coming more health conscious you know even with their their teeth and dental work I know a lot of dentists are recommending the electric toothbrushes over just a regular toothbrush now so yeah totally look for that kind of weird stuff and you can find this stuff new sealed in the packages at thrift stores at yard sales because people get it for gifts and stuff or they bought an extra and then they never use it and they clean the cupboards it's crazy crazy what people donate absolutely okay so here's mine so this is um, got an interesting little backstory to it uh, it's item number three six zero four nine five six three two five one four this is a throttle threads shirt with a Jack Daniels uh, motif patch thing on it and um, I have this listed at $99.95. I bought it initially because of the Jack Daniels, and I thought, eh, you know, this is this has got to be worth something. I didn't know the brand. I didn't know anything about it. Just brought it home because it was a good quality shirt. And you can buy on quality a lot and, and hit the target. So uh, I got it home and figured out that Throttle Threads was actually a really good brand, as well as it having the Jack Daniels patches. And there was not another one that had Jack Daniels on it. So put it up 100 bucks with best offer. I had a first offer come in pretty quick and it was $30, which I was not going to take. Just not enough. I paid $9 for the shirt, by the way. So I countered that one, $59.95. No, nope, didn't hear nothing. I then got another offer for, I think, 40, 40 or 45, somewhere in there. 
Uh, again, I actually I debated taking that one. I thought, oh, it's the second offer and about that range. Still a good profit. I don't know what made me do it, but I countered that day. So again, $59.95. They didn't take it. Guess what it sold for? Made me very, very happy. I think I was on the phone with my daughter when it when the ka-ching went off. Exactly, it sold for full price, $99.95. Plus, it's going to Canada, so they paid shipping on top of that. So very, very happy I held off on that one. So if you have a really good desirable item, use that and don't be too quick to take the offer. I know I give all this kind of... Uh, antagonistic advice but it, you have to look at it on a piece by piece basis if it's something where a lot of sellers have kind of the same thing then you got to look at maybe taking that offer that comes in but if you have something that nobody else has hold out you'll get it you'll get your price or very close to it yeah I was happy with that it's been a good week it's been a good week I think the key the key and something I've been doing the last couple weeks you guys I'm running more auctions and I know I am like huge on fixed price I love fixed price but I think you have to balance in now some of those auctions because the auctions are driving traffic they are coming up in the search quicker they are um, you, it, and again, you have to play it right. You can't just throw anything up on auction. So I'm being very picky what I put on auction. And if it's something that may be a little bit more on the common side, then I'm just like, I'm dropping the price way below what anybody else sells it for, using it as a loss leader. And that's the very definition of a loss leader. Something that if you were to put it at fixed price, you would get X price for it almost certainly say say if it's a fifty dollar item historically you can go look at results and it's bringing fifty bucks so you take that item you list it on auction at a starting price of like 995 and you let it fly yep it could only bring the opening bid but even if it only brings the opening bid what's happening is that item is pulling people into your other listings and you will see an increase in sales across the board and that's what I've been seeing this week it's been a really really good sales week because I I ran a lot of stuff I've just started 995 starting price man just like get it out of here let it go and for me it's it's all about getting some stuff out of here too you know I've, I've got to lower the amount of stuff that's that's sitting on the shelves so it's kind of doing a a dual job there for me this week um, it'll be interesting I have some ending tonight that uh, are those little cloisonne boxes remember me talking about those it was last week or a week before um, and I paid five bucks a piece for those started them at 995 now I'm not getting a huge profit margin if they sell at 995 but what's happening is several of them are now getting little bidding wars going so all in all if I take the total amount I spent on all of them which I believe I, I actually I paid less than five because I talked them into throwing in one free so I paid twenty dollars for all five boxes and if all five of them sell even at the opening bid I made 30 bucks not bad because the write-up on those was sell similar sell similar sell similar changed a couple things pictures were different boom they're up it was really easy to get all those listed I'm doing something very similar this week in fact I've been working on this most of the day I bought several lots of uh, airplane model kits like and I didn't bring one in here to even show on camera tonight bad me so I have about 80 of these things all told because I just kept buying the lots that some collector was putting them all through the auction house so I just kept buying them all and um, I ended up with about 80 of them and I got them all written up which was really easy because I had a template that I designed specifically for them so all I had to do was go in and change 
few things, the title, some of the, the key things. When I sorted them to list them, I sorted them by maker, and then I sorted them by scale so that as I'm listing, I'm not having to change even those things. That's staying consistent. And I gave them a little number system. So I got those little colored stickers, the kind that you use for yard sale pricing. And I put a little sticker on each one with a number in order. So now in my, uh, my page on Selling Manager, the little uh, product ID, I put that number. When one sells, I will see that number, be able to quality check, make sure I'm shipping the right model to the right person that sold. Uh, when I took pictures, I took a picture of that, that number first before I took the regular picture. So every time I knew I was coming to a new model kit and my wave of pictures that I had to do, um, it's worked out pretty good. I've got them all listed. They're all starting right after the show. And I have them starting one minute apart. So hopefully I get some rabid model fans that will come in and, and just want to buy several of them. So they are, uh, oh gosh, every brand you can imagine. Revel, Monogram, um, AMT, um, 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 Ertl. Uh, uh, Tamaya, you name it. I, I think there's a little bit of everything there, and they're they're vintage. Most of them are vintage. Some of them are quite old. Um, some of them are just like back to the '90s. Some of them have their original receipts that this collector person had purchased the models for originally. You know, one receipt from 1996 was like forty-two dollars. So, some good stuff. Some good stuff, and they're all starting at nine ninety-five. Nine ninety five across the board. I didn't research them, didn't look them up, starting them all out. Yep. I, I've sold them before. I've done really well with the model kits before. So uh, that's why I went ahead and just went for it. Now I got to tell you, I get bored. I get bored. <laughs> I'm dying. I'm, I'm looking around going, okay, I got to do something besides model kits because I've now seen just enough planes and boats and stuff that's coming out my ears. So on on to something different this week and I'm and I look at my shelves here of stuff that I need to list and I have things kind of by um categories of, of things so that I'm doing a lot of self similar and I've I've got my choice. I've got Toby mugs, pitchers, crystal and abalone shells. What do you think I should do this week? I know, I need that variety. <laughs> No troll dolls here. The crystal, I really do need to get the crystal listed. I do, because it's a high dollar item. And then I'm going on to art. I have lots of art, and I'm excited about getting the art listed, because um, I love art. I'm really trying to clear the living room still, too, and i got to tell you something that happened. So I really thought that I had all of this great stuff to go to Amazon's FBA, which is Fulfillment by Amazon. thought, ah! I'll get it all out of here. It'll be off of my floor. Not. <laughs> I, I have waited so long that uh, other sellers have lowered the prices on these items so much over on Amazon. Now I will do better on eBay with them. So that stuff will get all put on eBay this week. I got to love it. You know, anything that you can sell Amazon FBA, you can also sell eBay. And I'm finding sometimes for much better money because there's no price wars. I get to brand. I get to be in control of my pricing. Exactly, Ed, yeah, that race to the bottom. Ah, it drives me crazy. Crazy. So, yeah, so I got now I'm back to having a bunch of stuff on my table I need to get listed. But I can almost, I can almost see my entire dining room, I am happy to say. By next week, I'm, I'm saying it, I'm being accountable. I will have a complete dining room free of inventory. And I'm surprised my husband's not here listening tonight. <laughs> yeah, there's no reason to race to the bottom, you guys. There's just no reason to do that. It drives me crazy. Yeah, well, see, I have this big, big formal dining room table. And I thought I, you know, I have the room. I didn't want to store the leaves for it. I have three leaves, eight chairs, and it's all, the whole thing is set up. And it's been, it's been filled with stuff to list. 
the model kits have been all over it for a while. Yeah, <sighs> my bad. But that's changing this week. I'm getting my house back, you guys. I really am getting my house back. Hey, we don't need our tables till what? You know, like Thanksgiving? We got time. <laughs> Um, so I missed a question that, that we had up. Um, that was from Barb. Barb, you asked if I use two seller IDs to use free listings. Nope, I do not. I do not. I think that actually takes away from what I'm trying to do, which is bring in customers and sell more than just that item that I'm selling at the time. I really... I know many of you are going to hate me for saying this, but I really want eBay to get rid of those 50 free auction listings for non-stores. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I think they are detrimental. Now, what I would like to see them do for you non-store owners is just give you 50 free listings. Whether that is auction style or not auction style, just give you 50 free listings so that you can market correctly. Auction is not the way to go on most stuff, I'm telling you. Most shoppers do not want to wait seven days, five days, even three days, you know, however long is left on an auction. They want to go find it and they want to find it and buy it now. And even with having the buy it now, if your buy it now is not the price they want to pay, they're going to go look for a seller who's got it either at the price they want to pay or has a, a make offer. So I actually think those free auctions work against you. Now, if you have a store, but you're using a free auction ID to list those auctions. You may be selling some stuff with no listing fees, but there's no way to know how much business you're taking away from your eBay store because those people are not now going and impulse shopping in the rest of your listings. So I tend to not want to dilute my customer base. I have one ID, keep it all there. Um, I did used to have a second ID for my clothing items, um, Utterly Good Fashion, and I ran that for a while and pretty successfully. And uh, some of the, the top gurus out there advised me to knock that off and get that stuff into my regular store because clothing shoppers buy other stuff. And what I was doing is preventing them from finding my other stuff. So it's all just one big happy ID now. Yep. I don't even have a separate buying ID. I figure, you know what, if somebody really wants to figure out what I'm buying, they'll find a way. I, I, I just don't worry about it. And I do. I buy stuff right on eBay that I turn around and sell on eBay. Um, hasn't heard a thing. There are thousands and thousands and thousands of eBay users and the likelihood that somebody is really, really scoping out what you're buying and if you're selling it and all that stuff, yeah, highly unlikely. Uh, so Wendy asks, uh, I'm confused. If you don't think people want to wait to buy, why are you doing auctions? Good question. So there are some things that people will wait for or get involved with the bidding process or they just simply pull people into your store. That's why it's called a loss leader. It's an item that you are willing to take less than it's worth for because you're using it as uh, a draw. So let's compare it to big retail stores that do like the Black Friday deals. You know, they run that that one or two of that $1,000 TV for $99. That's a loss leader. The purpose of that is simply get somebody through the doors. So what you're doing by running auctions with loss leaders, get people in the door. Get them in the door to take a look because that's how people buy antiques and collectibles. They buy on emotion. They buy on something that sparks some memory or, or you know, makes them think, oh, I have to have this. That's how people buy. And you want them to be able to buy those things right off the bat. That's why the fixed price is really good. But if you have something at such a great deal that it's worth the wait, then people will bid. Does that make sense? So that's why if you start something that's worth $50 and you start it on auction at $50, you're probably not going to get the sale because there's no incentive for somebody to wait for that item. So you really got to watch what you put on auction and the price that you started at. People expect to 
bid on something at a much lower uh, value than its its end value. Do I put bin on my auctions? Bin being buy it now. I do not. I do not. I don't want to cap it. I don't want to put in their mind that it's only worth X amount of dollars. Uh, if I run it at auction, it's because I want to just see it go and see where it'll go. I mean, that's me. Sometimes bin can work. Um, how many of you who do put bin into your auctions actually have somebody use the bin to purchase? Anybody have good luck with that? Because I haven't seen it. I have not seen it work really well. Okay, so Mary says that it works for her, and I suspect it has to do with the type of product, too. Years ago, rarely, yeah, one person in five, that's what I'm saying. I, I just don't see people using that bin anymore because I think once they see it at auction, they're thinking, oh, well, I'm going to get it cheaper. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's, it's tough. You know, there, there is no one size fits all either. I find that every product has to be looked at on its own merits and decide what's the best way to sell it. And we just got to keep on our toes and, and be on top of it. All right. Oh, let's see. I wanted to give a little quick uh, recap of glass. Um, I had a question come in about some of the differences in, oh my gosh, you know, let's just talk about clear glass clear glass um, so in the clear gas glass clear glass <laughs> categories we have we have pressed glass um, within pressed glass we have the early American pressed glass we have depression glass uh, then you've also got your cut glass and within cut glass you have your American brilliant cut glass and you have more contemporary cut glass and it can get really confusing so I just wanted to give a couple little tips on telling the difference. So um, let's go with cut glass. Ugh. So for instance, this is a piece of American Brilliant. And I think even you guys can see through the screen the, the clarity of this glass first off um, without even feeling it yet. It, it just has an amazing clearness to it and that's because the elements that they used in the glass um, contained minerals that that made this um, it's it's got lead in it first of all so you got the weight in there um, and it's sharp that that is the the biggest thing that sets American brilliant apart it is so sharp you feel this and go dang this could cut my hand um, sharp, sharp, sharp. And several of you who didn't really understand that concept, but then uh, I've heard that you got your piece on a, uh, your hands on a piece of American Brilliant, go, ah, I get it now. Trust me, just keep that in mind. When you feel it, you will know it. There will be no doubt in your mind it is American Brilliant. And that is because those glassmakers had to make each one of these cuts by hand. Each one of these had to be precision done. Um, nowadays, contemporary cut glass is done with machinery, which does not make as sharp of cuts. Please hold the glass um, to my left for better light. What do you mean? Let me see if I can close up on it for you. Just the clarity and the... I don't know if you can see the sharpness of this, but... I'll hold still for a second. Hopefully it'll focus. Yeah, it's, it's really hard to show you the sharpness of this, but um, trust me, it's there. And it's, it's heavy. American Brilliant is always going to have um, some thickness to it. You can see how thick that edge is. Usually has a sawtooth. Now, a lot of you tend to look at this sawtooth edge and think that's what I'm talking about being sharp. Actually, these are rounded. Um, they do have the ability to round those. So it's not so much the, the sharpness of the sawtooth edge as much as the pattern itself. Okay. So now on a contemporary piece of cut glass, and I don't have really good examples sitting here. I need to, 
need to stock up on just some example pieces. But it's like this is a piece of a fairly contemporary crystal. And while it's still got the clarity and nice, the cuts, there's just no sharpness there. But yet you can tell it's cut because there's some, you know, fine points, some some ridges to it. Um, so, and, and I really wish I had a better piece of cut glass, contemporary cut glass. Um, there's a lot of uh, bohemian cut glass. You'll see a lot of that out there. Uh, German cut glass. Um, there's some really good brands out there. So don't discount it just because it's not American Brilliant. Um, just do a little bit of homework. And usually places that you find this stuff, uh, auction houses or estate sales, can usually give you a little bit of history or um, maybe even a name um, of one of the crystal companies. All right, pressed glass. So pressed glass is made in a mold. Uh, and pressed glass, and of course I can't find the mold mark. Here we go. I don't know if you guys can see this. I'm going to point my finger here and try to get the right angle. Yeah. What I'm trying to show you is there's a seam or a mold mark. Can you guys see that? Can you see the mold mark kind of going across there? So on bowls and such, and I have another piece here that's a bowl. Now, this is the difference here. This is early American pressed glass. This is contemporary pressed glass. So you'll still find mold marks, whether it is contemporary or Oh no. <laughs> oh my goodness, you guys. I just had a some kind of a crash. I don't know if you can still see me or hear me or anything. Let me try to refresh this real quick, see if I can get back on. Oh my goodness. I know you lost me. Hang on, guys. I'm trying. I'm trying. Let's see. Am I back? Oh my goodness. Can you guys see me again? Oh, good. Holy smokes. That was just so weird. All of a sudden I had this weird little crash thing on my uh, screen. Gotta love that. Okay. We are definitely looking for a new place to have the show. I'm about, I'm, I've given them more than three strikes. All right. So where was I? The glass gods beamed me up. <laughs> she knows too much. All right. So um, let's go back. It's talking about pressed glass. Um, so um, with early American pressed glass, there's several different patterns, lots of figurals, um, fruits, flowers, and some are just kind of plain ordinary lines and things. The plain ordinary lines and things, you kind of want to stay away from those. Look for anything that has, and I don't know if you guys can see the scene in this. It's a little boy with his dog pulling a cart. You know, children children and people and animals are always really, really good pieces to pick up. Um, I haven't decided if I'm selling this or keeping this. It's dangerous for me to find and keep a new piece because what I tend to do then is have to find every piece in this pattern. And I've kind of been, I've been bad. I've been on a shopping spree for a couple of my patterns lately. So, um, but early American press glass, you'll want to look for something interesting with it. Um, a lot of it is frosted and clear together. That's perfectly okay too. Boy dog cart winner exactly, okay. And then, like here is a piece. Now this came in a lot with other stuff. I am not listing this. This is going out to the yard sale because there's nothing exciting about this piece. It is just a piece of contemporary pressed glass. It's just nothing exciting. So yard sale. Um, depression glass. Most depression glass is pressed glass. Now this isn't a clear piece. Piece. This is yellow. Um, but also with depression class, you'll be able to kind of look in it and see some of the, the mold lines and seams within. And you and you pretty much know that this is not cut. It's pressed and it's smooth. It's it's rounded curves. You know, there's no sharpness to pressed glass. All right. 
So, glass 101. <laughs> I promise I'll I will uh I will get the uh, the video guide out soon on glass cuz it is a confusing subject. It really is. Just because it's pressed is it bad? Absolutely not. It is just the technique that was used and helps you determine how to research it, how to price it and how to market it. So, nope. Nope, there's good glass in all arrays. Um, before we run out of time, if Spreecast will cooperate, I did want to talk about some things coming up and some opportunities and dates are being announced for stuff. Um, first of all, you guys, mark your calendars. March 17th. March 17th. I am doing a very special Ask the Danny app show from a remote location. You do not want to miss the show. I guarantee you. Uh, I have the opportunity to go help list some extremely awesome uh, glass, porcelain, antiques. Um, I am thrilled to death to, for this opportunity. And so I will be doing the show where I have all these things to show you on camera. Uh, and it, it will be a lesson you guys do not want to miss. Trust me. March 17th, St. Patty's Day. St. Patty's Day. Be there. Be square. I don't know if we'll be on Spreecast. <laughs> we shall see. <laughs> um, March 23rd. Who's heading down to Tucson? Anybody heading down to Tucson for the TES conference, the Tucson uh, eBay Sellers Conference? I'm excited about this. You know, Tucson is my old hometown, and I'm coming in early, and I'm staying late, and anybody who's there, let's go shopping. How about that? I'm putting some things together. Uh, I will be speaking at the conference on March 23rd. Registration is open. It is, oh, somebody correct me if I'm wrong, I think it's like, $45 um, and that does include uh, lunch. Uh, definitely going to be a really fun event. It is the kickoff of this event headed by Sal Sally Milo. Uh, many of you know her. She's doing a fantastic job. This should be a really, really good conference. eBay's behind it, PayPal's behind it. Um, lots of good stuff going on. Please, please, please come down to Tucson. Let's get together. Um, let's see, uh, dates for eBay radio party were announced, uh, June, June 19th and 20th are the regular event and they've added another day on the 18th. Um, this is going to be a day just teaching sourcing. Um, I'm still waiting to get more details on that. Stay tuned. But uh, as you guys know, I'm here in Vegas and again, come on in early or stay late and we will go shopping. Come shop with me because I know all the spots. Um, come down to Texas. I, I want to come down to Texas. I absolutely want to come to Texas. You bet. Um, let's see. How about the cruise? Who's going on the cruise? You guys booked your reservations for the Sea Bay Cruise 2014. You've got a year to plan. A year to plan. This is, this is so easy, you guys. It's $339 per person for the cruise, that's like, save like a buck a day and you're there. Okay, so you have to save a little more than that. Um, but seriously, this is totally doable with so much time to plan. There's a $50 refundable uh, deposit to, to reserve a, a room. Uh, we've got several people. We're going to have John Lawson as the keynote speaker. We have two days at sea and those two days are going to be filled with uh, speakers and education stuff for eBay sellers. Um, eBay and um, e-commerce in general. Um, I'm happy to announce I will be one of the speakers. I'm very excited to be on this cruise. Um, my husband is going, so if you guys want to meet the troublemaker that shows up in the chat room often, <laughs> he'll be with me. We are going to have a blast. This will be my first cruise ever, so um, really looking forward to it and doing a little sourcing in Cozumel, maybe New Orleans. So uh, check that out. Get on board. It's going to be a blast. Oh, you guys, if you are calling and getting an upsell, that's no bueno. 
Um, that should not be happening. Of course, it is, you know, it is a uh, travel agency that's putting it all together. Just say, nope, I just want the $50 reserve my room uh, eBay cruise. Stick, stick to your guns on that one. You betcha. All right, what else, guys? Um, I know, you know, there's going to be EOL coming up this year, but they have not let us know anything yet. So, you know, the minute I know, you guys will know. Promise I will get you that info. Um, they always have one on the West Coast and then another one the other way. I, they say East Coast, but it hardly is ever all the way on the East Coast, except last year it was. Um, so we'll see. There's some rumors floating around, but I don't want to throw those out because we just, we don't know yet. Um, I think I covered it all. <laughs> So, you guys, thanks for being here. I know I'm up against the Academy Awards tonight. And so many of you, I'm sure, want to go and get those TVs on and see what stars wear and what and all that good stuff. And uh, we will do this again next week. Thanks, you guys. Bye-bye.